I'm Alex Cheprev and welcome to Crashing Maya. Hey guys, in this video we will uh, do some very simple end cloth, uh, basically using end cloth for modeling. So the first simple thing is uh, tablecloth. So let's just make one quick. I'm going to make a plane. I'm going to place it over my table and let's see, let's see how much of it we want to hang over like this and the first thing you want to do is to use a very low uh, geometry to do the solve because you want to uh, test it make sure it's working before you uh, spend the time on some high-res geo so and this is a pretty simple plane shouldn't be hard to do so I'm going to freeze transformations clear history uh, and uh, let's do it so first things uh, we need to create this as a, 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 a Turn this into an end cloth object. So let's go to polygons, end dynamics, end mesh, and create end cloth. We then need to create a collider object uh, because when you create an end cloth, it creates a nucleus which has gravity and that's going to fall straight down. And we need somebody to stop it. So I'm going to set this table, uh, select the table, and set it as a passive collider. It means that it will not uh, react to gravity uh, or fields and things like that, but it will. Uh, collide with uh, other end cloth objects. So uh, to start the simulation we need to set a couple things. First right click on the play button, go to playback speed and set play uh, every frame free. This will make sure that every single frame plays no matter uh, what the speed uh, what our frames per second is. It will play every frame as fast as it can uh, meaning that it's not going to skip anything and we need to solve every frame for this to work so and I like to set my timeline to like 600 to start and then you can you can change it uh, to whatever you need but this should be a nice good number and hit play there it is uh, so it's falling okay I think if we add more res uh, more detail to our end cloth it should be fine so I'm going to stop undo and uh, you can remove end cloth a couple ways. You can clear history, but that's going to leave some stuff behind. So you want to go to uh, end mesh and click remove end cloth. And this will remove end cloth from this object. And now we can subdivide uh, this plane, give it, make it double the resolution, clear history again. And let's create an end cloth one more time and hit play. It's going to be slower this time, it's a much denser uh, geometry but you can see it's falling much nicer. Now the thing is it, it can take uh, a while for it to finish doing what it's doing and then you can't really rewind because if you rewind it's done. So if you kinda like how it's falling uh, we can create a cache that way we can scrub through it. So you just go to you select your geo uh, or your end cloth geo go to end cache create new cache it's gonna run through the same simulation but this time saving uh, the simulation as a cache that we can then replay and scrub through and you don't have to solve the whole thing so I'm gonna stop here I'm just gonna press escape so now it's done and <clears throat> if you go past this it's not going to there's no cache beyond that but anything before that we can just scrub the timeline and we can play in real time this is actually not real time so if you do want to see it in real time you set it, your timeline to real time and hit play whoops let's go back so this is real time seems a little slow but that's okay so I'm going to go back to that so what you can do is actually scrub through and pick uh, a frame that you like. I think this looks pretty good. So I'm, all you have to do is select the geo, the end cloth geo, and duplicate it. What this will do, it will duplicate the geo and freeze it at that moment. You can still scrub through and pick other parts, uh, but <clears throat> this is frozen at this point and we can start working with it. We can export it as a NMA file, bring it to another scene, you can do some sculpting on it, add some detail, 
we can subdivide it and you can see it looks pretty nice so it's pretty simple uh, but there's other things you can do with end cloth uh, like modeling a cape so let's do that quick I'm going to delete first I'm going to remove the cache so end cache delete uh, delete cache don't need it I'm going to select the geo and just uh, delete end cloth remove end cloth and delete this geo we don't need it right now I'm going to hide the table <coughs> we already have a nucleus from our original um, uh, end cloth so simulation so it's going to keep using it so let's just make a quick cloth and uh, let's see we're just going to make a plane like this and then figure out the length of this cape so maybe something like that how wide like this and let's give it some divisions like that I'm gonna set here to negative 90 let's freeze this modify freeze <coughs> let's clear history shift all D and uh, <coughs> now I'm going to just make a couple cubes like this and like this and just freeze them uh, modify freeze and delete history okay good now I'm gonna use these cubes uh, to move the end cloth so first I'm gonna actually go to frame 1 and press S on both of them then I'm gonna go to frame 100 uh, this could be anything this is just what I'm doing and then I'm going to place where I want uh, my end cloth to, uh, to end up so like here one there that's pretty good and like this press S now the problems that we'll have is that it's gonna go through the shoulders so at this point I'm gonna move it here move it up press S and then see so what we want to do we want to drag the end cloth and then drape it over the shoulders let's see how it's moving That's perfect. All right, so I'm going to select uh, our cape here. Go to end mesh, create end cloth. I'm going to select uh, this and this point. Uh, let's just start with this one. Select this cube, then shift select. Let's pick these two uh, vertices and do a constraint point to surface. Then I'm going to select this uh, cube, select these two vertices, and constraint point to surface. Now, if we rewind all the way back, uh, we need to actually set uh, this uh, guy here as a passive collider. So I'm going to select all the things I want the cape to collide with and go to uh, end mesh, create passive collider. And let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so let's <clears throat> let's finish that. So you can see that it, it's gonna fall off the shoulders, but you know you can drop it lower. You can drop it uh, past. Uh, you can bring it past the actual uh, chest here. Uh, our cape's a little wide, that's why. And we can also add other objects to the passive collider list. So let's add this and. Let's go to frame 100 and maybe move the cape here like this. Okay. And I want to select, you can actually hide these, you don't need to see them. Uh, just break the connection visibility, break connections set this to zero and then for the end cloth I'm gonna write a cache so create a new cache replace existing we don't need to keep two caches <clears throat> 
Well, I guess we should have added the head as well. So let's stop the cache. So a lot of this will be trial and error to see uh, see what works, what doesn't. We have to delete the cache. So our cache is actually playing. Delete cache. And let's create a new cache. Replace. It's not looking bad. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna stop the cache here. Come on. There we go. And then we can scrub through. So you know, tweaking the position of the where the points end up. And uh, also the size of the cape, if it's uh, maybe it's too big, maybe it's too small, uh, will give you a nicer result. But the basics are there. So now <clears throat> let's use uh, Encloth to create also a uh, a curtain. That's one of the easier ones to do. So I'm just going to select this. And let's delete the cache. Remove Encloth. Let's delete this. And those cubes you don't need. Okay, uh, let's just hide the badger. I'm going to create a, a simple plane and add some divisions. Now, for a curtain, you don't need as many vertical divisions. So we'll add the height divisions. I think this should be enough. And let's set this to like 70. Uh, let's make this wider. Let's set it to 100, like that. That should be pretty good. So I'm going to modify freeze, and then clear history. And now we just need an object, like a cube, like this. And this will act as uh, basically like a curtain rod. I'm going to add some divisions this way, the same number, so 100. doesn't have to be exact, but just basically you want to match uh, those vertices as close as you can because we're going to do a constraint. So the other thing is we don't want to have geometry going through the curtain because if it does, uh, when it starts to bunch up, it might explode and kind of go through the um, <laughs> the collider object or the this object so let's clear history and freeze it all right so now the process is simple select this select the uh, end cloth and click create end cloth we're going to select this object uh, first we're going to select the these vertices and then this object and then do a constrain point to surface so you can see that it's trying to connect to this object here. So and if you hit play, you can see it's just uh, nothing's happening yet because it's it's all connected. But if we select uh, our curtain rod, press S. Uh, actually, let's go to like 200. And scale this down. Press S. Whoop. Mm, let's see, that's not right. Why do we have two? <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Alright, so select this uh, our curtain rod, press S, go to frame 200, let's scale it down, and then press 
yes. There we go. So it's popping. That's okay. I'm going to undo, select our curtain, go to the end cloth shape, and change the thickness. So the thick it's popping because of the there's a thickness to uh, the end cloth that's set, and when the when it folds over itself, the thickness forces it to kind of break. So we'll set this to 0 0.01. We don't need a very thick end cloth. Let's deselect and hit play. So let's uh, select it again. I'm going to make a new cache, replace. almost done and done so now we can scrub through and you can see there's our curtain now after it is simulated you can actually extrude to add thickness if you want Sometimes thickness doesn't work, so you just have to grab the Z direction arrow. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, if you have, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. Thanks for watching.